Welcome to the channel viewers, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. How to stop your adult children from ruining your new relationship or marriage. By Ellie Ball, published in 2018. I want to be upfront with you. I recommend only a few carefully chosen products and services if you make a purchase through one of the links. I may earn a commission at no extra cost to you. Okay. Can your grown up children? really be so felt selfish <laughs> oh my goodness so your adult children don't like your new partner and are potentially ruining the relationship they may have told you they don't like him her them and won't accept them they may even hate you for what you're supposed to be doing to them even though they're adults. Doubtless, you'll wonder now if your relationship can survive or whether you have to face a complete relationship breakdown. Doubtless, you wonder now if your relationship can survive or whether you have to face a complete relationship breakdown. Maybe you recognize any of the following. Your adult children are, number one, refusing to meet your new partner, not including them in cards and invitations, ignoring them at family events, unpleasant, disrespectful, or even verbally abusive towards them. They're letting you know in every possible way that they won't accept them. Unsurprisingly, your partner may have started to wonder if they're wasting their time trying to make the relationship work. You're wasting your time. How very sad and painful this is for you. So, let's get cracking in sorting it all out. The author says, My aim is to help you first understand what might be going on for your children, adult children, without understanding what could possibly underlie your kids' feelings, you won't find the best solution. Further down, we'll look at ways to help encourage your children to accept your new partner. When your partner's children won't accept you, you may find my article about being rejected by your partner's children helpful if you are newly introduced to your partner's family. You'll learn what you can do if their children don't like you, are disrespectful of you, or don't even want to meet you. How to stop adult children ruining your relationship. My children hate my partner. Why are those children so selfish and nasty? You and your partner are in love. You're both hopefully thrilled that you've got another chance at happiness in a committed relationship. You may have been cautious about how and when you told your children you're in love, but the news clearly hasn't gone down well, and after having introduced your new love, no matter what you do, your kids, adult children, continue to refuse to accept them. Why can they not be pleased you've found some happiness? After all, they're adults leading their own lives. Why should they want to interfere with yours? Let's see what might be happening for them. Ten reasons why your children can't accept your new love and even hate you or them. The more troubled your family was before you split up, the less flexible and more fearful your adult children probably are of losing what they've got. Therefore, the more offensive they are. 
They've learned to protect themselves from any further pain in what might have been an emotionally fragile environment. Perhaps they had they not had much chance to practice conflict management skills and made mis or and make mistakes in an emotionally secure environment. Their energy had to go into managing difficult situations as best they could. That may mean they're emotionally less mature than you might hope. Therefore, for example, your 20-year-old might act like a teen at times. Number two, your family was a close-knit unit. You were all really close before the breakup or the death of your spouse or partner. And now your adult children may be going through the following. Number one. They haven't yet come to terms with the losses associated with the breakup. They have not had time to process what's happened. Number three, you and your spouse haven't been able to provide the emotional support they needed because you were too distressed yourself. Number four, they haven't yet learned to cope with the upheaval and all the challenges they've had to face. Whatever the reason, if they haven't overcome the hurt or the breakup or death of a parent, they definitely won't have the capacity to welcome a new member of the family. Number three, long-standing jealousy and or resentment. One or more of your kids may already have been feeling resentful or jealous for a whole host of reasons. Unfortunately, your partner's arrival may have exasperated those underlying issues and now your new partner has become the scapegoat. Number one, your partner is likely to be extra attentive towards you, especially since the relationship is so new. Your kids could be resentful because they're angry with you. And they might blame you for the breakup of your marriage, for example. You may now also spend more time with your new love, where you may have been with your children in the past. And number three, your kids may also have a problem if they have to witness your kissing and cuddling someone other than the other parent. They may consider it over the top or inappropriate. Number four, your children are protective of the absent parent. Here's what they may go through. Number one, they feel fiercely protective of the other parent. They go to great lengths to shield them from further pain. Number two, they resent you for finding someone new and having abandoned their father or slash mother. Number three, they feel like they have to choose between their parent and pick a side. Chances are now that it's left you out of favour. And to learn more about the pressures on kids during separation and divorce, read the article How, Did, How Divorce Affects Children and Breaking Up with Children Involved. Point number five, the children are protecting themselves. Here's what your adult selfish adult children might think. They may feel that their other parent will be angry if they accept or even like your new partner. They perceive acceptance of your new loved one as betrayal of their other parent. And the other parent has told them point blank that accepting, liking and spending time with the new arrival is a betrayal. Point number six, the children are still grieving their losses. Be that through the death of a parent or the loss of a stable home through the breakup, this is what your kids may be experiencing. Number one, their other parent also has a new relationship and now they feel abandoned by both of you. Number two, they haven't gotten over the loss of your previous home. Number three, they miss the familiarity of previous routines. Number four, they 
they're having trouble with dealing with the loss of your attention. Number five, if their dad or mother has died, they're still dealing with a multitude of losses. Grief is often a complex and often lengthy process. Any children, even an adult child, still grieving the loss of their parents' relationship simply won't be ready to see their mum or dad in the arms of someone other than their biological parent. Number seven, they've been through it all before. Perhaps even several times, you or your ex might have been married twice and your kids have not had the best experience being in a stepchild even as an adult. Being a stepchild even as an adult. In that case, they're unlikely to see the point of investing in building a relationship with yet another love interest. They'll think that this relationship won't last either. There's that self-prophesying element that I tell you about. And your partner will be gone again in months. Number eight, they're angry because of the way they found out. It makes a huge difference in how the children learn about their parents' investment in a new relationship. So how did your kids find out? Was it accidentally through a public display of affection? Did they come across some communication text letter or email? Did they hear from their other parent, friend or neighbours? Where, where, were, were they told lies about your whereabouts and relationship status, probably with the best interests of, or intentions? And were you having an affair and was the secret catastrophically exposed? Or were the children told carefully with their feelings of anger, hurt, doubt and anguish, listened to and acknowledged. And even if they were told in the best way possible, they still might have had a hard time coming to terms with the relationship for any of or all of the reasons listed here. Number nine, you're still emotionally attached to your ex or the deceased spouse. This is particularly relevant if your spouse has died. You may still be grieving and nowhere ready for a new relationship, and the children know it. Or perhaps your spouse left you. You didn't choose to the end the relationship, and you haven't been able to get over your ex. Whatever the reason, if they, if the children know why you are still um, deeply attached to their other parent, they'll have a hard time letting a new partner into the picture. Number 10, your kids do not trust your new partner. You'll need to figure out if their rejection of your new partner is because they don't trust them. The question is, why not? Have the two of you met online? Is there a significant age difference? Are they worried about any cultural differences? Or are they worried you've been catfished? <coughs> um, catfished is um, all the signs you need to prove that you've been catfished how to outsmart a catfish how to end a catfish relationship and a ton more catfishing is one of the biggest online dating and long distance problems so I think it's when you get fooled Okay, why you might be struggling to keep the peace. Let's look at why you might feel so conflicted. Here are some possible explanations, not excuses. You're feeling guilty about not spending enough time with these adult children for causing the breakup of the family. You feel at the mercy of your ex for preserving the love of your children for a successful outcome of a yet to be finalised divorce. You've always tried to plead your offspring, if only to prevent them from having a go at you. 
You may have had problems setting firm, appropriate boundaries, even when the children were young. You worry you'll lose your kids if you don't do what they're asking of you or what you think they want you to do. You never lose your kids. Shouldn't. You only see one choice. You choose your children's needs over your partner's. Too many emotions are getting in the way of clear thinking about alternatives and compromises. Dealing with the emotional fallout from your adult children will no doubt be taking its toll. It can drain your energy and cause sleepless nights. You feel torn between building a new relationship and keeping your adult children happy. It's likely sapping your parents' partner's ego as well, energy as well. Your partner will have felt hurt by your children's comments and the fact and the fact that you don't get along. Or worse, your kids have refused to meet them at all, no matter how hard they've tried. That kind of cold, hard rejection hurts so much that it involves the same pathways in the brain as physical pain. I won't be surprised if both of you are beginning to see signs of an impending relationship breakdown. What about your partner's role? Your partner is likely to have noticed the atmosphere and how you're trying to keep the peace. They probably, or they probably have an opinion on that too. Maybe you're not firm enough, perhaps you should ignore them or not invite or listen to them, etc. For them it might be really frustrating not to be able to do more than watch you trying to build bridges with seemingly little success. Perhaps they also have to deal with resistance from their offspring. However, your partner may also be part of the problem. Your kids don't want a new mother or father. Here's how your kids may see your partner. They're trying too hard, they're being too friendly, they're overstepping personal boundaries, they're behaving as if they own the place. So what can you do? Is there hope? We'll start with the tricky bit, managing your expectations. Expect this to be a long-term issue. I'm afraid you'll have to be patient with the children. It might take some time before you're getting all getting along. I truly understand if you hoped I'd come up with a different bit of advice here. Also, now know that some of those relationship issues may never be resolved. Continuing to appease the children without any evidence of progress isn't helpful. There has to be a compromise on both sides. If the children aren't willing to compromise on a particular issue after a reasonable time, stop trying. Accept that you can't change your partner or your children. They will only change when they see the need. If they'll ever accept your partner, they'll do it in their own time. And suppose you feel you can't stand the situation any longer. In that case, I highly recommend you get some expert help, support and relationship advice. What to do when your grown sons and daughters are causing a rift in your relationship? Before moving on to three steps towards a more helpful future, here's what to do when your grown-up kids are potentially ruining your relationship. Seven ways to make a stand when your kids don't like your new partner. Number one, accept that your and your children's perspectives are different. Your sons or daughters may be experiencing loss, grief, anger, hurt, resentment or frustration. On the other hand, you and your partner probably feel happily happy together and hopeful for about a future. Acknowledging that your perspectives and feelings may be poles apart can help create understanding and patience in a difficult situation. 2. Make it clear that your partner will never take the place of their biological mother or father. Let them know that you're in no way trying to be a parent. Let the children know that they don't have to love or like your new partner or spouse. But equally, be clear that your partner or spouse deserves to be treated with respect and common courtesy at the very least. Good luck with that. <laughs> Number 3. Ask that the grown-ups respectfully accept that the situation is what it is. You and your partner are in a relationship. Again, they don't have to like it, but they also have no right to manipulate either one of you and sabotage the relationship. Neither can they be allowed to be deliberately cruel towards you or your partner. Oh. 
and let them know that you remain open to a conversation about the situation. Let the children know that you hope for their generosity of spirit. Tell them how much their acceptance and acknowledgement would mean to you both and how much you're hoping that eventually you will all get along. Know that it's unreasonable for your partner always to play second fiddle. You can't keep putting your grown kids first on every occasion. However, your partner needs to accept that you come as a package with your children. Oh, God. Be yourself and self-reliant. Ensure that your happiness, self-respect and self-esteem aren't dependent on what your children think and what happens in this relationship. If you're at all unsure about this relationship, I recommend that you take my comprehensive relationship compatibility test. Number seven, get professional help. If the situation seems hopeless, I highly recommend taking it over with talking it over with a professional relationship coach. They can support you and help you to find the best way forward. Three steps toward a more helpful future. Acknowledge the limits of your power. Acknowledge what you can't control and what won't change based on your experience so far. Number two, use the information in this article to identify as precisely where the problem lies for each party. The children are feeling, therefore I can. My partner feels, therefore I can. I feel, therefore I need to. Decide whether your boundary, where your boundaries lie. Face up to what you can and can't accept and consider whether this relationship has a real chance of survival. We're talking about grown-up children. You're too old now to waste your time. Step up to the plate. Don't just hang on in there hoping that something for, will happen. You might otherwise find that your partner decides they've had enough and ends the relationship, which is what happened with me. Who knows, your children might come around eventually. It may take some time, but it might happen sooner than you think if you're more determined. There's one caveat. If your children are young adults and are still fairly dependent on you, they will still need you. There may be at times... May be times when you'll want to pull, put their needs first. In that case, you'll need to be clear with your partner, and that's what you'll be doing. So, what if you can't see the difficulties ever being resolved? In that case, you have a choice. Reset your expectations as suggested earlier. Aim to see your relationship problems as challenges that can be overcome with hard work or need to be managed. Focus on what you have instead have instead of what you can't have. Failing this, know that walking away from the relationship could be the right decision for everyone involved, most of all you. And remember, there's no shame in asking for help. Taking it all over, talking it all over with a professional relationship expert can really help. Mull over what you've learned from this article. Take the time to self-reflect, consider and decide firmly on your needs, wants and boundaries. Then set a time for a calm, considered, open and honest conversation with your children and your partner, perhaps best separately under the circumstances. Tell them how you feel and what you're truly, you truly want and expect from your relationship what each, with each grown-up. To prepare yourself for such challenging conversations, start by reading my articles on communication skills and finally, it helps to know where the problem lies and where to direct your energies precisely. So I hope the above has enabled you to understand better the situation and your selfish grown-up children. Take steps to change what can be changed and accept what can't. With a little time, effort, patience and understanding, there may still be a chance that your children, adult children, will come to accept your partner. Sure, they won't necessarily treat them like their new best friend, but still there's plenty of room for mutual respect and recognition of each other. So there you go. This is Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, theologist. Bye for now.